In fact, when we face anti-Semitism today, whether it be here or in Europe or any part of the world, we ought to say to those purveyors, we are all Jews. Quote, the Zionist money Jews are the global problem. Europe, and in particular Germany, are now getting what they deserve from Zionist Jews, particularly rich Zionist Jews in the USA, unquote. A winter responded to the Post on Saturday, and she said, quote, it's great. You took the words right out of my mouth, unquote. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass House Resolution 354 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the resolution. House Resolution 354, resolution expressing the sense of the House of Representatives regarding the safety and security of Jewish communities in Europe. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from California, Mr. Royce, and the gentleman from New York, Mr. Engel, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and to include any extraneous materials in the record. Without objection. Thank you. Uh, speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Speaker, members. Anti-Semitism in Europe is on the rise. Jewish communities there are on the edge. Fearing this rise in hatred toward them may signal a return to Europe's darkest days. This sad reality is well documented by authoritative reports from the Pew Foundation and the Anti-Defamation League and others. In 2015, a survey by the Anti-Defamation League showed that over 25% of European respondents said that they harbored anti-Semitic feelings. And that number had significantly increased from the year before in a few countries such as in the Netherlands and in the United Kingdom. It is a phenomenon clearly felt on the streets, seen scrawled across synagogues, and in desecrated burial sites, and even demonstrated in deadly acts of terror. We all recall the horrific attacks on the Charlie Hebdo offices and the grocery in Paris, and the later attacks at a synagogue and a cafe in Copenhagen. Just last month in Manchester, four Jewish youths were attacked by thugs who shouted their hatred of Jews. One of the victims, a 17-year-old boy, had to be ha hospitalized. The rise in such attacks and hate-filled rhetoric is causing Europe's Jews to look over their shoulders and even consider fleeing communities that they have been a part of for over 20 generations to seek safety elsewhere. Targeted violence against the Jewish people or any other religious or minority group is repugnant. Sadly, the Jewish people have been among the most persecuted in the world. When you think of the consequences of the Holocaust, when you think of the consequences of the Inquisition, the magnitude of it comes home when you realize that there are as many Jews left alive on this planet today as, the, as there were during the early days of the Roman Empire. The slaughter of these people, their persecution, is leaves for humanity the thought, have we learned nothing from the Holocaust? European leaders must unequivocally send this message to their people and act to provide greater protection for their Jewish citizens. This important resolution proposes several common sense steps for our European allies to consider to improve the safety of their Jewish communities. It calls for establishing partnerships between law enforcement and Jewish community groups in order to improve the security plans and the training 
and enhanced law enforcement response to these anti-Semitic attacks. Improved sharing of information between government agencies and law enforcement and Jewish community groups is another key recommendation. And finally, this measure encourages European nations to improve communication between themselves and with the United States to analyze trends in anti-Semitic crimes and to share best practices in combating extremism. As we learn from the Holocaust, anti-Semitic sentiment can lay the foundation for persecution of Jewish communities under the guise of political protest or under the guise of nationalistic pride. That is why leaders of free societies everywhere must expose these prejudices for the dangers they pose to their communities. And I want to recognize Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey for authoring this important measure and as always thank Ranking Member Engel for his help in this measure and in getting this bill to the floor. And I urge my colleagues to join me in support of this timely resolution. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The general from New York is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of this measure and I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. I want to thank uh, Chairman Royce uh, again for uh, being uh, on top uh, of all these very important issues and under his leadership the Foreign Affairs Committee has really uh, taken the lead uh, in important issues such as, such as this. Uh, I want to also thank Mr. Smith from New Jersey for sponsoring this resolution. Uh, as the chair of our Foreign Affairs Subcommittee dealing with human rights issues, Chris Smith has been focused on the disturbing surge of anti-Semitism in Europe. Uh, he's always uh, there. He always uh, speaks out forcefully about anti-Semitism and other things that are important to him, and I'm grateful for his leadership. Um, it's disappointing that we still need to take up this sort of measure. But as we all know, anti-Semitism, that ancient hatred, has continued smoldering through the centuries. Week after week, we hear reports of new anti-Semitic attacks, the vandalism of the Baba Yar Holocaust site in Kiev. I've been there a number of times. It's very disheartening that that would be desecrated. Uh, the targeting of the great synagogue in Copenhagen, and of course, the unfathomable attack, as Chairman Royce mentioned, in Paris last January. And we'd be foolish to dismiss this surge in anti-Semitism as the work of a few violent fringe individuals. In countries like Hungary and Greece, shamefully, we see explicitly anti-Semitic political parties winning seats in elections. And it's deeply troubling, very disturbing. It wasn't even a century ago that we heard this canary in the coal mine. And you can draw a straight line from early indifference and inaction to the darkest chapter in human history. The lessons of the Holocaust are seared in our collective consciousness. Those lessons are telling us to throw water on this fire before it burns out of control. You know, I was born after World War II in New York, and I remember hearing uh, family members uh, talking about anti-Semitism. And the general prevailing thought was, well, this is something that will never happen again, that the Holocaust was so horrific that uh, the world humanity uh, would understand that something like this uh, could never happen again. And when I say never happen again, I mean to any group, not just to Jewish groups, to any group. Uh, this uh, cannot be tolerated, and one has to just look around the world and see all the hatreds and all the people that are being slaughtered because of who they are or what tribe they're from or what people they're from. But it's particularly galling um, in, on Europe, in Europe, where so many people, six million people perished, Jewish people perished uh, during the Holocaust, that anti-Semitism would rear its ugly head once again. One would think that people would be ashamed and would not want to uh, go uh, down the anti-Semitic path again. And here it is, barely 70 years after the end of World War II, and we see an alarming rise. And it's an alarming rise from a lot of different communities. There are uh, skinheads and, and, and people who have always um, uttered uh, anti-Semitic uh, remarks. Uh, but we also, unfortunately, uh, have a number of people living in Europe of Middle Eastern descent of, uh, who also are using the uh, conflict uh, between Israel and the Palestinians uh, to, again, fan the fires of, uh, of hatred 
anti-Semitic hatred. And um, as the, the numbers of, of people uh, from, from Arab lands uh, go to Europe, some, unfortunately, are fanning the fires of anti-Semitism. That has to be condemned and stopped as well. Uh, anti-Semitism needs to be condemned no matter who is espousing it, no matter where it's coming from, and no matter what they're saying. And it's really time to call it the way it is. So we need greater vigilance by law enforcement when Jewish communities in Europe are under threat. But it's not that simple. We also need greater leadership from officials by speaking out against anti-Semitism. Uh, we had a bill just a couple of hours ago, maybe not even a couple of hours ago, uh, which um, talked about the Palestinian leadership not condemning anti-Semitism and, and having uh, incitement uh, of things that, that result uh, in anti-Semitic attacks. So this is the same thing. It's the same thing whether it's in Europe or the Middle East. Uh, it's rearing its ugly head, and it's time for us to continue to speak out against it. Uh, the United States of America has always been the, uh, the bastion of, uh, of, of society, and the, the world looks to us for leadership. And I think it's very important that the United States Congress is doing this now. So we need greater vigilance by law, law enforcement when Jewish communities in Europe are under threat. But it's not that simple. We also need greater leadership from officials by speaking out against anti-Semitism. We need stronger partnerships with Jewish communities to help them develop their own safety responses, community policing techniques, and information sharing with government agencies. And we need to foster cultures that respect diversity and don't ostracize minority groups. Um, I condemn uh, any kind of ostracization uh, of any minority group uh, in this country or around the world, uh, we need to step in and say that we will not tolerate it. So this resolution encourages the, these efforts, and I encourage my colleagues to support it. Um, Anti-Semitism is rearing its ugly head, but it can be defeated, and I think what the Congress is doing today is a very good step in that direction. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from California is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to yield the remainder of my time to the author of this measure, Mr. Smith, who as uh, U.S. Chairman of the Helsinki Commission works with our European allies to improve the security and improve the safety of these Jewish communities in Europe. Uh, we appreciate his authorship of this resolution, and I ask unanimous consent that he be allowed to control the time. Without objection, the gentleman from New Jersey is recognized for the remaining time. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to uh, Chairman Royce for his leadership on this very important human rights issue, as he has done so ably and effectively on all of these issues, particularly his leadership on Iran. Uh, and that, of course, would be echoed with uh, Elliot Engel's uh, excellent work there as well. This is a group of, of uh, leaders that have made a huge difference. So thank you, Chairman Royce, uh, for that. Uh, H. Res 354, uh, Mr. Speaker, prescribes specific effective actions that government should take in response to the deadly threats to the Jewish communities in Europe. As we all know, the number of violent anti-Semitic attacks have increased from 100 to 400 percent in some European countries since 2013 alone. The murders in Paris and Copenhagen and elsewhere reminded us that there are those who are motivated by anti-Semitic hate and have the will and the means to kill. I would just note parenthetically that my work on, in combating anti-Semitism began uh, back in 1981 in my first term from this very podium, speaking out in favor of Jewish refuseniks. And I joined Mark Levin and the NCSJ one year later in 1982 <clears throat> on a trip to the Soviet Union where we met with men and women who are targeted by the KGB and by the Soviet evil empire simply because they were Jewish. Sadly, anti-Semitism has not abated, and in recent years, it has actually worsened. So this resolution calls for the United States government to work with our European allies on specific actions that are essential to keep European Jewish communities safe and secure. It is based on consultations with the leading experts who are working directly with these communities. The resolution focuses on the formal partnerships between European law enforcement agencies 
and Jewish community security groups. Here in the United States, Mr. Speaker, the collaboration between the Department of Homeland Security and Security Community Network, an initiative of the Jewish Federation of North America and the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, has been essential to protecting Jewish communities here. The former partnerships between the Secure Community Trust in the United Kingdom and the Jewish Community Service, Security Service in France and their respective governments have, are also excellent models that need to be emulated. The resolution emphasizes the importance of consistent two-way communication and information sharing between law enforcement agencies and Jewish community groups. It encourages the development of a pan-European information sharing, communication, and alerting system, and envisions governments intergovernmental agencies and Jewish communities working together on it. Such a system should function day round and year round and include training for personnel who are implementing it. The resolution also calls for European governments to support assessments in several key areas and accordingly adjust their actions and strategies. Details matter. The assessment should gather and analyze data on crimes committed, response from law enforcement, types of attacks or incidents that are most prevalent, and the types of targets that are most at risk. It is essential to understand how law enforcement agencies usually receive reports of anti-Semitic crimes and what initial actions they take when a report is filed. I remember years ago when I offered a resolution at the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly, we heard that it was just hooliganism and other kinds of acts done by young people. When you spray paint a swastika on a tombstone in a Jewish cemetery, when you deface a synagogue and you attack people simply because, or a man because he's wearing a yarmulke, clearly these are acts of anti-Semitic hate, and yet they were being dismissed as something that was other. Assessments are also needed on Jewish community security groups, particularly of their capabilities, resources, relationships with local law enforcement agencies, preparedness, including emergency response plans, and the extent to which their decision making is based on the best available information, analysis, and practices. The resolution calls for governments to use these assessments to help these community groups develop common baseline safety standards. These standards should include, as I said before, training, controlling access, access to physical facilities, physical security measures, including cameras and crisis communications, emergency exercises and simulations, mapping access to facilities, and sharing information with law enforcement agencies should also be part of the standards. These assessments, Mr. Speaker, will help achieve the resolution's call for law enforcement personnel to be well trained to monitor, prevent, and respond to anti-Semitic violence and to partner with Jewish communities. For all of these assessments, governments should draw information from sources that include Jewish groups, law enforcement agencies, independent human rights NGOs, research initiatives, and other civil society groups and leaders. HRES 354 calls for safety awareness and suspicious, and suspicious activity reporting campaigns, like if you see something, say something here in the United States. Other aspects of the resolution include appropriately integrating initiatives to counter violent extremism and those to combat anti-Semitism and the urgency of implementing the declarations, decisions, and other commitments of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe that focus on anti-Semitism. To accomplish these goals, the resolution calls for European governments to ensure that they appoint or designate senior officials with the necessary authority and resources to combat anti-Semitism and collaborate with governmental and intergovernmental agencies, law enforcement, and Jewish community groups. Finally, the resolution reaffirms support for the mandate of the United States Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism as part of the broader policy uh, of fostering international religious freedom and urges the Secretary of State to continue robust U.S. reporting on anti-Semitism, 
by the Department of State and the Special Envoy to combat and monitor anti-Semitism. I would note parenthetically that I authored the amendment to the Global Anti-Semitism Review Act introduced and sponsored by Senator Voinovich of 2004 and that my amendment created the Office to Monitor and Combat Anti-Semitism within the State Department and that has proven to be a key tool in this fight. Mr. Speaker, the resolution has the support of leading organizations uh, and it has 89 co-sponsors including all eight of the co-chairs of the bipartisan task force for combating anti-Semitism. I would like to acknowledge, Mr. Speaker, John Farmer, Jr. and Paul Goldenberg for their tireless efforts and dedication and leadership in fighting anti-Semitism and terrorism over the years. John is a former Attorney General of the New Jersey and is now on the steering committee of the Institute for Emergency Preparedness and Homeland Security and co-director of the Faith-Based Community Security Program at Rutgers University. Paul is the executive director of the Secure Community Network and a senior advisor uh, to the Institute and the program. Several major Jewish communities in Europe have relied on their council and both have spent time on the ground within these communities. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge and single out for very, very special thanks and recognition, Rabbi Andy Baker, personal representative of the OSCE Chair in Office on Combating Anti-Semitism and Director of the International Jewish Affairs for the American Jewish Committee. He has been critical, critical to American leadership in Europe and in the United States in the fight against anti-Semitism. Speaker, I reserve the balance of our time. The gentleman, the gentleman from New York is recognized. Thank you. At this point, I yield uh, three minutes to the gentlewoman from New York, my good friend and the uh, ranking member of the Appropriations Committee, Nina Lowy. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I want to particularly thank Chairman Ed Royce and my good friend, our ranking member, of the committee, Elliot Engel, and uh, all those who were so involved in putting this important resolution together. I rise in support of House Resolution 354. It was introduced by the co-chairs of the Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism. <clears throat> in the aftermath of appalling anti-Semitic incidents throughout Europe, including the devastating terrorist attacks at the Paris Kosher supermarket and the Great Synagogue of Copenhagen, this important resolution urges the United States government to help improve the safety and security of Jewish communities in Europe. From Austria to Belgium, Germany to the United Kingdom, Ukraine to France, there's been a sharp rise in assaults on Jewish individuals and acts of vandalism on Jewish places of worship, cemeteries, and memorials. Such destruction and desecration is unacceptable and must be stopped. That's why this resolution is so critical. It highlights specific ways the administration can work with European governments, especially law enforcement agencies, to formally recognize and partner with Jewish organizations to develop common safety standards, alert systems, information sharing mechanisms, and ensure that local law enforcement personnel are effectively trained to monitor, prevent, and respond to anti-Semitic violence. I want to express my appreciation to my fellow co-chairs of the Anti-Semitism Task Force, Representative Smith, Engel, Granger, Israel, Ross Layton, Deutsch, and Roskam. The task force remains committed to working across regions, religions, and party lines to condemn all anti-Semitism and fight for the right of Jews to live freely as Jews without fear. Before closing, I also want to express my strong support for HRES 293, which condemns anti-Israel and anti-Semitic incitement within the Palestinian Authority and calls on President Abbas to discourage such despicable behavior. The latest cycle of terrorism against Israel must end. The only way it will end if Palestinian leaders take genuine and immediate steps to denounce all violence and promote security cooperation, coexistence, and peace with Israel. As the ranking member of the State and Foreign Operations Appropriations Subcommittee, I will continue to do everything in my power to bolster Israel's security, to combat incitement, to promote stability and peaceful coexistence throughout the world. 
and I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman from New York reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. I'm uh, sorry. Mr. Speaker, I yield three minutes to the gentlelady from Florida, Ms. Ross Layton, the chair of the Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Middle East and North Africa, and the former chair of the full committee. The gentlelady is recognized. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Smith, for yielding the time. And I rise in strong support of Mr. Smith's bill, House Resolution 354, expressing the sense of the House of Representatives regarding the safety and security of Jewish communities in Europe. I was an original co-sponsor of this resolution, and I want to highlight the work of my good friend and colleague, Chris Smith, for his leadership on this issue, and indeed for his tireless efforts to fight anti-Semitism and support international religious freedom. I'd also like to thank our fellow co-chairs of the Congressional Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism for demonstrating their leadership on this issue in Congress and for raising the level of awareness and dialogue within our body related to global anti-Semitism. In recent years, Mr. Speaker, the protection and the promotion of these values have moved from being part and parcel of our foreign policy objective to not even ranking as one of our top priorities. It is time, it is way past time, that we make respect for human rights and the protection of religious and ethnic minorities a top priority for our foreign policy objectives and show real leadership and show that we have the will and the moral imperative to promote our values across the world. The terror group ISIL is rising in the Middle East. It's seeking to establish an Islamic caliphate. It wants to wipe out the region's re uh, religious minorities of all kinds and anyone who does not adhere to its radical brand of Islam. This, along with an alarming rise in anti-Semitism in Europe and other attacks on religious freedom across the globe, underscores why Mr. Smith's me measure before us today is so timely, is so important. It urges our government to work with European governments and law enforcement agencies in order to help them fight the rise of anti-Semitism across the continent and to make combating anti-Semitism part of our government's broader policy of promoting international religious freedom. Europe is at the dawn of a lamentably repeated and dangerous era, one of anti-Semitism, often masked through a political anti-Israel stance. And if we don't move to act now, Mr. Speaker, we may see more deadly attacks like the murder of four Jews in a kosher supermarket in Paris earlier this year. We in the United States must be at the forefront, leading the effort, helping other nations develop a more comprehensive approach to confronting the rising anti-Semitism problem. And this measure before us today establishes a good framework. If I could ask the gentleman for 30 additional seconds. Yeah, the uh, 30 additional seconds. Thank you. Establishes a good framework in moving forward. And I want to thank the task force members, of which I am humbled to be yet just a small part, Congressman Chris Smith, Kay Granger, Peter Roskam, Elliot Engel, uh, Nita Lowy, P uh, Ted Deutsch, uh, Steve Israel, all of us working together to highlight the spread of anti-Semitism and steps we must take to stem this tide. So I urge my colleagues to support this important resolution brought forth by the gentleman from New Jersey, and I thank all of the members who have worked on the task force to bring this forward. Thank you, Mr. Smith, and I yield back. The gentleman re reserves. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Mr. Speaker, may I ask how much time is left on both sides? The gentleman from New York has 11 minutes. The gentleman from New Jersey, three minutes. Okay. Well, it's my pleasure uh, to yield um, three minutes to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Deutsch, who is the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on the Middle East and North Africa and a good friend. The three gentleman minutes. is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> I thank the gentleman, the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee for yielding and for his tireless work to address the threat of anti-Semitism around the world. 
Mr. Speaker, this resolution was a collaborative effort among my fellow co-chairs of the Bipartisan Task Force for, for Combating Anti-Semitism, and I thank each of them for their commitment to bringing attention and responding to the proliferation of anti-Semitism globally. I especially want to thank and acknowledge Congressman Smith in New Jersey for his commitment to human rights and his ongoing fight against anti-Semitism. This resolution is a strong statement by Congress that in the face of rising global anti-Semitism, countries including ours must prioritize the security and the protection of their Jewish communities. The anti-Semitism we are witnessing around the world today is both unique and long-standing. It is amorphous and it is very direct. It is complex, but in many ways, it is straightforward hatred. Not every case of anti-Semitism will garner international attention like the attack on the Paris supermarket earlier this year. However, Jewish communities around the world experience attacks and intimidation on a regular basis. Just weeks ago in Marseille, France, an armed man attacked three Jews near a synagogue, including a rabbi and his 19-year-old son. The third man suffered serious injuries from the stabbing. Earlier this year in Argentina, the phrase death to the Jews and a swastika were spray painted. In Ukraine, there have been at least three incidents of Holocaust memorials desecrated with swastikas and in many cities, Jews are simply afraid to walk the streets as Jews. Tragically, these cases are far too commonplace for Jewish communities. No one, Jewish or otherwise, should ever have to accept that they will feel targeted, that they will not feel safe, and that their lives are always somewhat at risk. Governments must take a hard look at the trends of bigotry developing in their countries, and they must be sufficiently prepared to act preemptively and respond swiftly to cases of violence and intimidation against Jewish communities. This resolution, among other things, calls on countries to build partnerships between communities and law enforcement agencies, to establish standard procedures for responding to threats and attacks by outlining steps to take and the responsibilities for each party. I welcome the historic and continued bipartisan and overwhelming support in Congress for combating anti-Semitism. Tonight, we stand against anti-Semitism, it's true. But where anti-Semitism grows, it is a symptom of the growth of hatred, of bigotry, and of the violation of human rights. I encourage my colleagues to support this resolution, and in turn, to support a world where hatred of any type, anti-Semitism, and all hatred will not be tolerated. That's the world that we envision on the floor of the United States House of Representatives this evening. Again, I encourage my colleagues to support this resolution, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from New York reserves of the gentleman from New Jersey uh, Mr. is Speaker, recognized. we reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Uh, I now yield uh, two minutes to a very uh, valued member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Connolly. The gentleman is recognized. I thank my friend from New York for his leadership and Mr. Chris Smith from New Jersey, of course, for his and that of the task force. Mr. Speaker, anti-Semitism and the safety of Jewish communities in Europe are issues with overwhelmingly powerful historical context. The continent has more than intimate knowledge of the devastation wrought by the purveyors of anti-Semitism. When we say never again, our threshold for action shouldn't be the impending threat of violence, let alone genocide. Instead, we must marshal the will and the resources to stamp out even the conditions or precursors to an environment that allows for such anti-Semitism to flourish. In fact, when we face anti-Semitism today, whether it be here or in Europe or any part of the world, we ought to say to those purveyors, we are all Jews. That's the protection we ought to seek. The proactive measures and collaboration encouraged by this resolution are in keeping with what should be our highest standard for vigilance with respect to anti-Semitism. Never again isn't about words. It's a pledge that's sacred and must be kept. I yield back to my good friend from New York. The gentleman from New York reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey Speaker, we continue to reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from New York is recognized. I now yield two minutes to the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Cohen. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Engel. I want to thank you for the time. And I want to thank everybody who's put uh, efforts into bringing this resolution to the floor. It's a 
not difficult to stand up, or it shouldn't be difficult, and I don't think it is, to speak uh, against anti-Semitism. But it's a little more difficult to have uh, carved a niche in the United States government and government around the world as being a leader in fighting for human rights and anti-Semitism, against anti-Semitism. And that's what I've seen Congressman Chris Smith do. He is a chair of the Helsinki Commission, of which I'm a proud member, and I've got to learn to know Mr. Smith during that uh, hearings we've had and, and travels on the Helsinki Commission. And Chris Smith is a super leader in looking out for people and minorities all over the world. So I thank you particularly for your efforts at spearheading this and being vigilant. It's so important. It's hard to fathom that we still have anti-Semitism as we have in this world. It wasn't that long ago that the Holocaust occurred. And we've got Holocaust museums and Holocaust programs through the countries. And we've had a lot of uh, Holocaust museums and understandings in Germany as well. But you've got skinheads and you've got folks that are disciples of ISIL who continue to spread hate and venom. Eli Wazel, who was a survivor of the Holocaust, said, people who hate, hate everyone. And I know Eli Wazel, who was a, a genius and a prophet, was right. So it's important that we stand up, that we share resources with our European allies to fight anti-Semitism, and this country remains a bulwark in fighting against anti-Semitism. We haven't always been that. We are today, and we will continue to be. I'm proud to support this resolution. I thank the members for bringing it and urge all members to vote for it and pass it. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from New York reserves, the gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself 30 seconds. I just want to thank my, my dear colleague, Mr. Cohen, and the other members of the caucus, uh, the task force, I should say. And this is truly a bipartisan resolution. Uh, we, we all contributed to it. We all care deeply about it. And I want him to know and my other colleagues uh, how deeply I respect their efforts, uh, which have been Herculean to try to end this cruelty that is on the rise in Europe in the United States and in other parts. We know the Middle East, uh, it, it is perhaps as bad as it has ever been. Uh, and the diaspora that makes its way into Europe uh, is carrying that hatred with them. Not all of them, of course, but a sizable number uh, presenting more and more challenges. So this is truly a bipartisan effort. And I want to thank Mr. Cohen for his comments. Reserves, the gentleman from New York is recognized. Um, it's my pleasure now, Mr. Speaker, to yield two minutes to a gentlewoman from New Jersey, a new member, but she certainly made her mark, Ms. Watson Coleman. The gentlewoman's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank Mr. Engel for giving me this opportunity to speak, and I want to thank our, uh, my colleague and neighbor, uh, Congressman Chris Smith, for introducing this resolution. I stand in proud support of the resolution and I urge its passage. More than seven years, 70 years removed from the Holocaust, Jewish residents in Europe face renewed waves of anti-Semitic violence. The Pew Research Center reported that global harassment of Jews has reached a seven-year high. The violence is pronounced in Europe where the desecration of synagogues, cemeteries, schools, and other violent incidents have spiked over the past few years. The Jewish Community Security Trust report reported more than 1,100 anti-Jewish incidents in the United Kingdom in 2014, including 81 violent assaults. That same year, according to the French Jewish advocacy group CRIF, anti-Semitic incidents doubled in that nation. Troubling violent and even deadly anti-Semitic attacks have also occurred in countries such as Denmark, uh, Belgium, and Germany. As a leader in the international community, the United States plays a very vital role in denouncing anti-Semitism and hate. The national director of the Anti-Defamation League has attributed U.S. public figures speaking out against hate has contributed to steady decreases in anti-Semitic attitudes domestically. As a nation founded on equality and religious freedom, we share a responsibility to stand against anti-Semitism anti and against hate in all its manifestations. Whether it is the hate that manifested as four people were killed at Hyper Cache Jewish supermarket outside of Paris this past January, or hate manifested as the nine Americans killed in the massacre at Mother Emmanuel in Charleston, or the hate manifested as six, six killed at the Sikh temple in Oak Creek, or the hate that manifested in the flames that have recently burned countless black churches.
trenches to ground. We must join together as a nation and global community to denounce hate wherever it may appear and uproot weeds of hate whenever they may sprout. And with that, I urge my colleagues to support this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Engel. The gentleman from New York reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is uh, recognized. Mr. Speaker, I continue to reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Uh, I now yield one minute to the gentlewoman from Florida, a very valued member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Ms. Frankel. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Engel, Mr. Smith, my uh, colleagues on the anti-Semitism task force. Mr. Speaker, Suzanne Winter, a member of the Austrian Parliament from the extreme right-wing Freedom Party of Austria, received the following post on her Facebook. Quote, the Zionist money Jews are the global problem. Europe, and in particular Germany, are now getting what they deserve from Zionist Jews, particularly rich Zionist Jews in the USA, unquote. A winter responded to the post on Saturday and she said, quote, it's great. You took the words right out of my mouth, unquote. Mr. Speaker, uh, this resolution condemning anti-Semitism in Europe takes the words right out of my mouth, and I support it emphatically. I yield back. The gentleman from New York reserves, the gentleman from New Jersey is uh, recognized. We continue to reserve. I the gentleman reserves, the gentleman from New York is recognized. Yes, I'll, I'll close now, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman is recognized. Um, history has shown us the, the tragedy of what can happen with this sort of hatred when it goes unchecked. It's past time for governments and communities to focus on the rising tide of anti-Semitism in Europe and do whatever it takes to turn it back. This resolution sends a message that we're keeping a close eye on the problem and that action is needed now to meet this challenge. I encourage my colleagues to support this measure. I want to also uh, compliment my good friend Chris Smith, who, you know, we all work hard on this, but no one works harder than he uh, in combating anti-Semitism. And if you know Chris Smith, you know that when he gets obsessed with something, he follows it to the end, and it always has a great conclusion. And he's obsessed against hatred. He's obsessed against bad things happening to any group of people. And uh, I'm very proud of the work that he's done uh, through the years and uh, want to uh, want to thank him for his leadership in combating anti-Semitism. With that, I, I urge my colleagues to support this measure and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I want to thank Mr. Engel for his leadership and his kind words. Again, this is truly a, a collaboration of, collaborative effort and I want to thank him for it. You know, Mr. Speaker, at a congressional hearing I chaired in 2002, and I've chaired uh, about 18 such hearings on combating anti-Semitism, Dr. Shimon Samuels, Samuels of the Wiesenthal Center said, the Holocaust for 30 years, this was in 2002, uh, after the war, acted as a protective Teflon against blatant anti-Semitic expression, especially in Europe. That Teflon, he said, has eroded and was what was considered distasteful and politically incorrect is now simply an opinion. He warned ominously and said, cocktail chatter and fine English dinners can now end as Molotov cocktails against synagogues. Mr. Speaker, Abraham Lincoln once said, to sin by silence when they should protest makes cowards of men. Silence is not an option, and I would equally say nor is inaction. If we, our fight is, is to succeed, we need government officials at all levels to denounce, but not just to denounce, but to act without hesitation or delay whenever anti-Semitic acts occur and wherever they occur. There are no exceptions. The purveyors of hate never take a holiday or grow weary, nor should we. HRS 354 is a best practices resolution designed to seriously inspire and challenge the governments of Europe, especially law enforcement and their homeland security agencies to partner with their respective Jewish communities to mitigate and hopefully end and eradicate anti-Semitism in all of its ugly manifestations. The United States Law Enforcement, Department of Homeland Security, the Justice Department, the FBI, as well as state homeland security agencies, including my own state in New Jersey, have been robust and aggressive in combating anti-Semitism here. 
We need to replicate this and encourage others to follow our lead and that of the UK, and, and, and I do hope we will do that. This resolution is broadly bipartisan. I want to thank Nathaniel Hurd on our staff for his tremendous work uh, in working on this resolution, working with all of your respective staffers and members, of course, uh, to bring this about. And I want to thank the leadership for bringing it to the floor uh, this evening. And I, for that, I yield back the balance of my time and urge a yay vote. The gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and agree to House Resolution 354 as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The gentleman? Uh, the, the yeas and nays. The two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The resolution is agreed to without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed. One more okay. <clears throat> Quote, the Zionist money Jews are the global problem. Europe, and in particular Germany, are now getting what they deserve from Zionist Jews, particularly rich Zionist Jews in the USA, unquote. A winter responded to the Post on Saturday, and she said, quote, it's great. You took the words right out of my mouth, unquote.